Mineral wealth from deep below Indian territory powered the railroads and sent settlers west long before oil became America's fuel of choice. Coal was the object of Oklahoma's original energy boom, and the mines are still open. OETA's documentary series Back in Time looked at the lives of the men and boys who worked and died mining Oklahoma coal. Long before the discovery of oil, coal was king in what would one day be Oklahoma. Immigrants, men and even boys as young as 10, would work 13-hour days in the dark for just a few cents. Mines in Indian Territory were generally recognized as the most dangerous in the United States. The way it was put, 13 deaths per million tons of coal mined, and uh, that was double what it was in Kansas. Uh, during the territorial period, with Indian Territory having no real governmental structure, uh, the idea was that there was almost no regulation, and so there were, there were, the mines were more hazardous because of that. You can be maimed pretty bad, uh, crippled for life. A lot, a lot of them were lose legs, arms, and a uh, pretty good chance of getting black lung. Water, you'd have floods. Somehow break into a, a, an aquifer and all of a sudden a big flood. To the coal developers, the important thing was to get the uh, coal out of the ground and to market at the best price possible. If they were in the ground, working in the ground, and the uh, the ground would start moving, you could feel it, a creak. The first thing you did was get the mules out of the mine. The mules were more important to the coal developers than the, than, the, than the workers. If a mule got killed in the mine, you had to buy another mule. If a man got killed, uh, you just hire another man. They were waiting in line. The methane gas problem was probably worse in Oklahoma than in other parts of the country. And the methane gas that would seep out of the coal naturally would build up in pockets. And from time to time, those would be set off and explode. Initially, they had candles. And uh, then they had oil lamps that looked like a little teapot. had a wick coming out of it. And they put oil in it, and it burned. And then they had the carbide lamps. And it was an open flame, so if you uh, encountered flammable gas with one of those open flame lights, uh, like get uh, exploded. Their wives must have sent their husbands and let sometimes even young sons off to coal mine in the morning and not knowing whether they were going to see them in the evening. They had things called windy shots and methane was all in these coal mines so if they they had too much powder or too much spark happen when they were, were blasting the walls. It would carry throughout the mine. It'd go a mile, mile and a half. Um, that's why in 1892, mine number 11 for the Osage Coal Mining Company, they had a, a disaster. 100 people were, were killed, and more than 200 were injured. Um, from what I understand, it was a windy shot that, that spread through the, the mine so rapidly people couldn't get out, a lot were uh, trapped and then a lot of people died trying to get back in and save them. As the miners were preparing to leave shaft number 11 at Krebs, operated by the Osage Coal and Mining Company, shortly after five o'clock last evening, a terrific explosion occurred, spreading earth among 400 miners from more at work. The exact cause of the catastrophe is unknown, but it is supposed some miner fired a blast without authority, the blast igniting either the gas or coal dust, causing the explosion, which was terrific. Flames went skyward a hundred feet or more, followed by a report which was heard for miles. Vernon Courier, Indian Territory, January 8th, 1892. That was, at the time, about the third worst disaster in American history of this type, a coal mining disaster. Safety conditions were awful. Uh, pay was low. And because people on the frontier, especially immigrants who didn't speak English, who had no support group, who had no representation in Congress or state uh, governments, and out here in the territory, of course, zero status in the Indian nations, and so easy to exploit this labor. They raised families, built communities, and found a hard living digging in the dark. It was a dangerous job with few rewards for the men and boys that lived and died mining Oklahoma coal.